uh, before I get started and we sing, I was just thinking about how at our church um, that hymns would do these fascinating things. And let me make sure I have this correctly. There we go. That even on Sunday morning, we may hear a holy, holy, right? Sunday, right? You can hear all those wonderful things. You know, it was just beautiful that you could hear holy, 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 and at the same time, you could hear something like, um, In the same service that could be changed from this 4-4, right, to a 12-8, you may hear. So it's exciting to me to see that what's, um, what was sometimes not on the printed page could come alive. Come alive. Uh, I want to share with you why, um, what, what sort of what a basis or um, serves as a basis of what we'll do tonight is that uh, we are so excited to, in uh, GIA publications, to have this new hymnal that represents the traditions of many African-American congregations. Uh, and and I, I want to read for you, and it just came out like last month. Take a peek, <laughs> right? Take a peek. It's called One Lord, One Faith, and One Baptism. And uh, Dr. James Abington, who is just well known in the choral music world and, and um, does so many wonderful things with hymnody, um, has an interesting thing I want to read to you so you can sort of frame what we're, we're um, uh, the particular um, hymn book, but also frame what we'll do. Uh, several of the mainline uh, ministers of music from like the Methodist Church and the Baptist Church or the Church of God in Christ and all of these uh, African-American denominations, predominantly African-American denominations, got together to think about some of the seminal pieces that were part of their own traditions. And he says that uh, they were charged with this notion of coming together and at the next meeting, picking things that really were representative of their own particular traditions. And he said there were three things that came out of, of this particular need for a new hymnal. And uh, you may agree with some of these, but I thought they were interesting. Number one, he says, first, we wanted to, um, the richness of our theological, cultural, and musical heritages to be preserved. Um, and he was saying that there were so many wonderful things that were a part of traditions that were beginning to be lost. Um, with with um, new uh, musical traditions happening uh, there in, in this particular um, uh, time, space and time, there's an emphasis less on traditional hymns and more emphasis on sort of contemporary music and praise and worship and uh, a, a move from uh, a choir to a smaller ensemble. Right? And so he was saying that they didn't want to lose, um, lose that. The second part was that they wanted to provide a volume that would allow younger people to know and learn the breadth of songs of the tr um, church tradition. Right? I love that. I love the fact that me being 41 still can look back at what my grandmother, my great-grandmother, and the songs that sort of guided faith and, and told history. And I thought, yeah. I love that. You're, you're, you're a witness with me. <laughs> um, I know my mom, my grandmother would love that because they always think that, that, that um, at some point young people throw the baby out with the bathwater, and that's certainly not the case. Uh, and then third, he says, as an ecumenical uh, hymnal, we all echo echoed one another in expressing how we envision this hymnal providing a needed and perhaps overdue understanding of the unity in the body of Christ. And they were just saying that... It, um, that you could have, in, even in one area, several Baptist churches or several Lutheran churches or several um, Methodist churches, and they could still be very different uh, in their singing styles, where you could have in one Baptist church, and I'm just using that, that denomination as, a, as, a, as, a, um, and as, a, as an example, but you could have uh, a very um, liturgical 
uh, worship style where there would be a pipe organ and there would be a choir. There would not be drums or there wouldn't be tambourines. At the same city, across town could be the same, another Baptist church who may be very more neo-Pentecostal, where they may be clapping. I don't know if you clap here at, Lu, um, at La Casa, but no, <laughs> someone answered. <laughs> but there could be some, yeah, quietly, okay, yeah, yeah. But there could be some, um, some variances of those. There could be drums, and there could be tambourines, and there could be some, you know, um, uh, choirs and, uh, and Hammond organs, you know, those kind of things. And so I, I, he, he, I love the fact that, that this particular hymnal represents all of that uh, in, one, um, in, in one volume. And so guess what? You get to experience all of that tonight. Yeah. yeah. It's okay to say amen. <laughs> yeah. And so... Um, I just picked a couple of them that I thought were really nice, and um, we'll try to sing through some of them. Is that okay? Yeah, it doesn't work if you don't sing. And I don't mean that you can't sing, but that you won't sing. <laughs> yeah? So they say, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Make a joyful one tonight, okay? Yeah? And if some of you want to come closer, sometimes it feels better to, you know, to be singing, and you may be comfortable, and I certainly understand but it can, could be helpful if some of you come closer that we could feel more like a, a, a body in a choir. Um, so I want to go to the first one tonight. And um, I certainly want to just, you know, they, they're here with me. Uh, I'm not here alone. And they're probably going to shoot me for saying something like this or get on me later. Uh, I was, I was, all of us have been working today at the university. We just started back. Uh, and so I was in my office having a really, really rough day. But I have some really, really good colleagues who decided they would uh, finish their voice lessons and write uh, to Scott still with me. And so in the back are two of my colleagues from Arizona State. They're professors in the School of Music, Dr. Stephanie Weiss and also Professor Nathan Myers. And so I'm just happy to have them. Yeah. Yeah. So let's try some stuff. Now, uh, just one caveat, right, is that, that you may be so inclined to move or to rock or to sway or to clap, or to say amen, and can I tell you, it's welcomed. It's part of the tradition that in African-American worship, um, music and, uh, I'm a six star, um, dance and movement and, and singing actually go together. That if I were, and I'll, I'll you know, if I were um, at the university, right, if I was at the university, and we were doing a, a piano thing like, and somebody said, yes, you better play that piano. That would certainly be sort of inappropriate. People would go like, oh, I can't believe. Sally, did you hear what he said, right? The same thing is also true that uh, in a gospel song or some kind of a gospel hymn, that to, to just be quiet is the exact same, like, right? Because uh, praise is really given not at the end of a performance, but during and with and through as a way to say how great you are. Yeah? Yeah? You'll, you'll get there. <laughs> so let's take a look at some things tonight. Uh, the first piece I picked is called Holy One. Um, it actually doesn't even sound like a hymn, but it certainly has a, a, a wonderful calypso feel to it. I'm going to just play some of the text so you can feel it. So you feel this rhythm. Holy One, we worship Thee, for You are God, Lord of everything. Thing. We, adore, we adore your name, we give you praise in your presence, Lord, we stand amazed. You see that? You think you can try it? Basses, tenors, altos, and sopranos. You ready? One, two, just try it and go and Okay, yeah. Now, now, just a, a performance uh, etiquette is that many of you are singing this way, like and that's very legato. If you could syncopate it even more, not holy one, we worship thee. It has to be holy one, we worship thee. So you feel like you're skipping stones. Make sense? One more time. One, two, ready and go. Yeah. We And 
second verse, ready, second verse, look at it, honor. And you can almost sing a bit louder, the difference between a kitten and a tigress. Yeah, one, two, ready, honor and glory. Let's fix that rhythm. Can we do it? It's honor and glory, power and might. Okay, ready? One. And this side is kind of singing a little bit louder, so they're telling you to join them. One, two, ready and honor. Next part, the bridge, it says, you are worthy of glory and honor and praise you are worth. Whoop, turn the page. Sorry. Worship. I'm sorry. Mm. All right, can we try that part right there? It's a little tricky there. You are worthy. Ready? One, two, and go. You are worthy of glory and honor and praise, Lord. We worship and reverence you all of our days. Before you, thanks and we praise. There is none like you. We bless your name. Pretty easy. And then we go back to the very first verse. Notice that the first and the third verse are the same, though. Ready? First verse. One. To our holy hand. Yeah. Lord of Verse two. One more time. Can we do it? One, two, and go. You Verse three. Can we make it three to end the song? One, two, ready, holy, go. my drummer so we could hear, hear the little calypso thing and that would be you know it, so of course this this is filed under adoration and praise uh, and you can imagine um, how great it would be I was just thinking about how in many churches and I'm going going back for just a moment uh, the Duke Street hymn of um, um, right and so uh, Roberta Mar Martin took that same melody you know praise God from whom all blessings flow right um, she would have changed it from that, that particular meter and done something like praise. Do you feel that sort of the drive and the movement and oh, you can imagine my aunt just rocking and being very proud to be back in church one more time. So you hear. So I was joking with you know, my friends who don't uh, attend black churches, and they always ask, so how can you stay in church for two hours? That, that's part of it, right? <laughs> part of it. 
Oh, I love this. You sound great. Okay, let's go on to um, total praise. Many of you know Richard Smallwood. Richard Smallwood um, was a classically trained musician, classically trained pianist. And what I love about Richard Smallwood is that he combines a lot of classical elements to um, some gospel traditions. And so this actually made the hymn book, even though it's really not a hymn, it's hymn like. Um, but it's a beautiful hymn. And in fact, I, I introduced this to the ASU Gospel Choir. So we'll sing it at our next concert. It's just a beautiful song. And if you go to YouTube, you can see choirs across racial categories and across generations singing this hymn. So it's kind of become like an unofficial uh, gospel number that's not really like gospel-like, but has some, some elements to it. Uh, let's try to sight read through this. Ready? Uh, let's take a little bit faster. One, two, ready, Lord, here we go, and... More challenging? Yeah. yeah. I'm drinking it really slow, so there's no Lord. And I apologize, I, I got a head cold this weekend, so I really don't have a voice. So I, I can't help you out like I want to. So there's that Lord, I will lift you that gift. Keep going. Let's go back one more time. Two times a jar. <laughs> and altos, I would say, uh, and I just thought about this, you may be struggling to find your part because you go, is this my part? It really is that low. Some of you were like, Lord, Lord, Lord. yeah. That's your first note, altos, Lord, I will live my, it's, it's low. Tenors, Lord, I will live, then basses, Lord, I will live. Okay, you sound great though. Ready, and go, and. Yep.
And then the amens, it looks a little crazy to take a look at it. You see it? When the sopranos have the amens. Then you start walking up the sopranos. Amen, amen. Then you walk it up. Amen. So you see that? Uh, and then um, you either have a walk up or you have a little hold. Ready? Good luck. Dude. Ready? Amens. And here we go. And go. Now, actually, that is a, it's a challenging part at first. I, you know, uh, you, you, you at least stood with it, right? You, 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 you try it, right? It's, but when you hear it, though, it's like, oh, like, what a moment to say it is so, right? Yeah, this is something that, that happens as a challenge. I love it. Beautiful piece. Um, here's one I love. Uh, be still. You, are you okay? Kind of like, oh, why did we come to this? <laughs> So this one is a bit, um, this was a bit different. Um, there's no music to this. Um, there was a time where uh, churches didn't have um, the luxury of drums or, or didn't have um, organs and those kind of things, but you had your body. So guess what you get to use tonight? Yeah, use your body and some of you could um, even keep a little beat with your foot to tap. Because you would have, at least back in southern churches, those wood floors. You know, and you can hear this little rocking. And so this song's a call and response where I'll say something and maybe some of you may want to take the solo and I'm perfectly okay with that. Yeah, but it's very easy. Um, so take a look at it where you'll see what the leader says, be still and you go. You see that, very simple? Oh, thank you, I'll tell you. I'm in the spotlight, thank you. Um, let me make sure I have an A, B, C, that may not be A. And I have no voice, so don't you, don't laugh at me. So try it with me, ready? And it says, uh, be still. Yeah, but you gotta come right on it, ready? Yeah, y'all are like, what? Now this is a, be still, be still. And then together we go, God will fight your battles. You see that? Ready, try it, and here we go, my turn first. Be still. God will fight your battles. And I go, be still. be still. Here we go. God will fight your battles. Be still. Be still. Yep. God will fight your battles. God will fight your battles if you just keep still. Now, you got it? Now, you got to get it in your system because pretty soon I'm taking the music from you. Okay? Because it's a call and response. You just kind of get it. Yeah, some of you are like, okay, what's my note? Okay, one more time, be still. I mean, I, I want to take change the key. Be still. be still. God will fight your battles. Be still. be still. God will fight your battles. Be still. be still. Yeah, God will fight your battles. God will fight your battles if you just keep still. You got it? Now, take a look at the second part for just a moment, because then you change the words at the very bottom, or at the very top, you see verse two, and then at the very bottom, the words are listed at the um, um, keep a waiting or keep a singing or I'm a witness. You see that? Now, here's the other part that you don't know, is that part of the challenge of capturing um, the beautiful music like this is that some things that singers would do or some of the ways that we do uh, would sing are, aren't able to be captured as accurately on a printed page. And so a song like this, people would make their own harmonies up. So even though we have a be still, somebody would say be still, that could be a be still. God will fight your battle, or oh, God will fight your battle. You, you hear the harmonies? Ooh. Yeah, I loved it. I could still see all the ladies with those big hats on. 
that I would get mad at because I couldn't see the preacher. You know, but it was a wonderfulness to hear those harmonies that you could hear from the parking lot. So I'm challenging you to sing it up. Ready? Let's try. Be still. Be still. Yeah, but remember, you, but remember, it's not just singing, it's singing and moving. So you got to tap a leg, put your hat together like that. You got to hit that one. Snap. Boom. Snap. Yeah. yeah. Here we go. Be still. Be still. God will fight your battles. Be still. Be still. Oh, God will fight your battles. Be still. I know God will fight your battles. God will fight your battles if you just keep still. Okay, put the paper down now. You got it. That, now you know it. So you just follow. Uh-oh. Like, uh-oh. I laugh. I, I, I worked with a church before I moved here in Chicago. And I had one choir of ladies. I'm sorry, you can't see. I had some, some uh, choir of ladies who sang in a community choir. They did big stuff like, you know, um, uh, Beethoven, you know, they did all this big stuff, you know, and, and Brahms, and, you know, they loved it. But they always wanted some sheet music. Like everything we said, even things they knew. So don't you be like those ladies. Ready? One, two, here we go. One. Just follow. Here we go. Be still. Now remember, I start with, yeah. Mm. God will fight your battles. Be still. Oh, God will fight your battles, be still. I know God will fight your battles. God will fight your battles if you just keep still, keep singing. Yeah, God will fight your battles, keep us singing. Oh, God will fight your battles, keep us singing. God will fight your battles. God will fight your battles if you just keep still, keep awaiting. God will fight your battles, keep awaiting. Oh, God will fight your battles, keep awaiting, keep awaiting. God will fight your battles, God will fight your battles if you just keep still, keep a singing. Oh, God will fight your battles, keep us singing. Oh, God will fight your battles, keep us singing, yeah. Oh, God will fight your battles, God will fight your battles if you just keep still, keep a praying. Oh, God will fight your battles, keep a praying. Oh, God will fight your battles, keep a praying. Woo! Yeah, God will fight your battles. God will fight your battles if you just keep still. And I'm a witness. God will fight your battles. I'm a witness. Oh, God will fight your battles. I'm a witness. <laughs> oh, God will fight your battles. God will fight your battles if you just keep still. Be still. God will fight your battles, be still. God will fight your battles, be still. God will fight your battles, God will fight your battles if you just keep still. Woo! Yeah! <laughs> this song, I, I really like the text. Um, we found out two years ago, uh, my father, who is a Vietnam veteran. I don't know if you have veterans out here uh, in our church, uh, in our congregation today. My father is 75 years old, uh, had never been sick a day in his life. My dad drove long distance um, trucks for 40 years or something and, and would drive and be gone for two weeks. He would come back in and me and myself, I felt like I had done something. I've worked all day and like I'm tired, right? <laughs> My dad had um, worked for two weeks, comes in, changes clothes, mows the grass, and fixes this. My, of course, my mama had a honeydew list that was like this long, and you know, he was doing some kind of project. Um, but my father, we found out, had gotten um, uh, diagnosed with multiple myeloma. Yeah, it was a hard moment because for the first time, I see this strong black man seem weaker. And it wasn't so much the physicalness 
That was hard for me. It was hard because I could tell in his spirit he wasn't able to do for his family like he had. And it was in that moment that I remembered these kinds of songs. When they say, be still, and God will fight your battles. And what, those weren't just lyrics, but those were reminders. Does that make sense? That part of black hymns, a hymnody, comes out of the struggle of life, right? The idea that it would say, I'm a witness, and I am a witness because dad is doing great now. Isn't that wonderful? I mean, he's doing wonderful. I mean, you, he's driving, you can't sit him down. You know? I love that. And so I always encourage people to whatever you can draw on to bring the text alive, that's part of it. It's, it's more than, than, than the melodies. It's, it's bringing alive the fervor. Whew. It's, it's, so it, it's two things. It's style. You're clapping and you're rocking the style. That may not be Lutheran style, but tonight it is, right? <laughs> right? It's style and it's substance. And I think sort of this hymn book brings out the idea that you have to have both. Can we do it one more time? Who wants to take the lead? You see, I'm flat because I'm, I'm still recovering. I'll share my love with you. If you feel so moved, you can do it. Let me get the key. And some of you want to stand up. You can now. Be still. Ready? <laughs> do you want to stand or you're OK? Yeah, come on. You don't have to, only if you feel good. Mm, be still. Ready? Be still. Mm, clap. Mm. Mm. Jennifer, I think you should try this on Sunday. <laughs> Be still, God will fight your battles. Be still, oh God will fight your battles. Be still, you know God will fight your battles. God will fight your battles if you just keep still. Be still, I know God will fight your battles. Be still. Oh, God will fight your battles, be still. I know God will fight your battles. God will fight your battles if you just keep still, keep a praying. God will fight your battles, keep a praying. Oh, God will fight your battles, keep a praying. God will fight your battles. God will fight your battles if you just keep still, keep waiting. Ooh, God will fight your battles, keep waiting. Oh, God will fight your battles, keep waiting. Ooh, God will fight your battles. God will fight your battles if you just keep still, keep a singing. God will fight your battles, keep us singing. <clears throat> oh, God will fight your battles, keep us singing. God will fight your battles, God will fight your battles if you just keep still. And I'm a witness, I'm a witness. Woo! God will fight your battles, I'm a witness. Oh, God will fight your battles, I'm a witness. Woo! God will fight your battles. God will fight your battles if you just keep still and be still. Mm, God will fight your battles. Be still. Oh, God will fight your battles. Be still. Mm, God will fight your battles. God will fight your battles if you just last time and be still. God will fight your battles, be still. Oh, God will fight your battles, be still, be still. I know God will fight your battles. God will fight your battles if you just be still. <laughs> Have a seat, y'all are making me nervous. <laughs> Woo, awesome. Isn't that wonderful, though? Yeah, I love that. Um, I just love the way that song, and you know, if you hear all the harmonies and, whew. yeah, I was, um, I forgot where I was, I was driving, 
And it may have been one of those things. I live uh, in Gilbert, uh, near Queen Creek. Um, and I was coming, I mean, it would have been one of those times I was coming from like North Scottsdale and I had like almost an hour drive, you know, to get home, that kind of feeling. And I thought, I'm just gonna sing a little of this song. And thought I would sing maybe five seconds of it. Do you know I sang that song all the way? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but songs do that to you, right? They get in your spirit and you just can't let them go. Uh, yeah, y'all sound good. So let me put a selfish plug so it's because the ASU Gospel Choir is open to community members. And so if you have nothing to do in your schedule from 4.30 to 5.45 on Tuesday and Thursday, you can come and sing with us. And I've heard you sing. <laughs> Yeah, we're working on that. Yeah, we're working on that. We've got an invitation, I love it. Yeah, they're, they're wonderful and I think maybe you, you have heard the story about, I took the job in 2015 fall and we had 12 singers to be enrolled that semester. The choir had been off the books um, for a couple of semesters because of low enrollment and someone from the, um, the um, community was, was teaching, so not an ASU faculty member, but someone from the community was teaching and whatever, for whatever reason, um, they only had about eight people. And I, the first semester I started, there were 12. Um, and, and I told them, I said, you know, the hardest thing about having 12 is that we had some 12 different kinds of singers, you know? <laughs> I mean, we had, you talk about the balance, we had like two sopranos and five altos and, and three, uh, I don't know if they were tenors or bassers or who knows, right? Depending on the day. And for some reason, um, they bought into the philosophy of, of, of growth and proficiency and trying to get better. And they, they, they really um, started to embody the style of the, the music. And we sang at our uh, winter show. And I, I'm not even sure what we sang that, I can't remember. Um, and this is one of those shows where everybody is there, you know, for the School of Music. And I kept thinking like, oh. and I'm going like this because one of the guys who should have been in the second row but so he could watch the person rock, decided I'm gonna stand in the front row and I don't know how he got there. So you wouldn't know what this looks like, right? Where that, everybody's going this way and he's going the opposite way. <laughs> I mean, he was excited, I'm like, yes. And I just kept thinking, I just kept thinking like, oh my goodness, we're in front of all of my colleagues, we're in front of all the other ensembles. And just to go sh to show you how good God is, right? That at the end of that particular concert, people stood up and just clapped, and it was this amazing feeling. And I'm in the back, you know, people are saying, Dr. Thompson, I'm signing up for the gospel choir. I'm signing up for the gospel choir. And I'm just being modest, like, oh, thank you. They're just being kind. You know how we do that. And the next semester, we went from 12 to 55. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wait, it gets better. <laughs> It went from 55, so that would have been fall, 12, you know, fall 2015, there were uh, 12. Spring 2016, there was 55. Fall 2016, there was 84. Spring 2017, there were 125. Yeah. Yes, hallelujah. <laughs> and so now we've sort of been at, at, at 100 mark. Uh, but it's been beautiful to see people uh, singing gospel music for various reasons. You know, people because they love the music. Some of them love the social aspect of singing together, how great it is to, to sing with people and friends uh, from other departments and uh, majors. Um, some of them take the, take the music for the cultural value, hearing my stories and talking about, you know, that they love that part. Some people take it for the recreational part. Can you imagine doing this for... <laughs> Right? So yeah, so it, it's, been a, it's been wonderful um, that regardless of faith and regardless of um, religious beliefs, that people are just coming together to sing. And I'm so excited about that. Yeah, I'm just excited to see young people, uh, people singing. So they're doing what you do tonight. Yeah? And I think you can do it too, right? Okay, yeah, let's go on. I'm not sure what my time is. I, are you serious? I feel like we just started. <laughs> So let's do a couple more. Um, what, what do I want to do? My colleagues made sure that I said that I couldn't call them to sing anything, but you know. Yeah. 
I said the same thing too, but you know. <laughs> yeah, you know, they would listen to you, they don't listen to me though. But yeah. <laughs> So let's do an easy one. Can we do an easy one? Yeah, well, actually, let's not do an easy one yet. We'll, we'll end on let the church say amen. Because that's a, a wonderful, like, ending, closing, you know, idea that, uh, uh, that things are over. But uh, I like this little I am redeemed because it has like a nice little, um, it's 9-8, but it feels like this 12 thing. I am redeemed. That a price Jesus has changed my whole life. So you see that? Can we try it, everybody? Nice little bit. So you know there is this thing. I don't know, Jennifer, if you deal with this. Sometimes because people don't know it, they sing back. They hold back. Go ahead and sing it out, even if you don't know if you have the right notes. Trust me, I'll fix them. Here we go. Try it. And I am redeemed, brought with a price. Jesus has changed my whole life. If I want you to tell them I am redeemed. Woo! All right, one more time from the beginning. Sing out a little bit more. Here we go. And I am redeemed. Brought with a prize.
joke with the gospel choir, I call it cooking with good grease. Yeah, because back at home, you know, they still use a bit of grease. A little Crisco, I heard it back there, sometimes some lard. Um, but I, I, I tell the students at, at, at the university, when you sing like you just sang, uh, and, and sometimes I make a McDonald's reference because they may know about McDonald's fries, sometimes you go and get fries and you can tell the grease is, needs to be changed. But you were singing with good grease. <laughs> In other words, you're, that was wonderful, wonderful. Well, uh, our time is drawing to a near, um, but it's been so wonderful just to go back uh, and capture all these songs that are, 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 are found in this hymnal. Um, and it's just beautiful. There's so many great things. Um, but this song right here, Let the Church Say Amen. Jennifer, do you want to play it? Yeah, it's just kind of slow. <laughs> Jennifer Sheldon, all the way from Scottsdale, Arizona, everybody. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I'll take yours. You can just do that. Yeah, it's, it's very simple. Uh, let the church say it. Uh, we do this. Let the church say amen. I'm kind of doing it almost in two, but let's do it. Um, let the church. Three, four, one, two, okay? It's real crazy. One, two, three. No, let's take it slower. Let, so it's like one, two. Let the church say amen. Yeah, hear that, everybody? Let the church say amen. Let the 
church say amen. God has spoken. Let the church say amen. Ba -da -da -da. Back to it again one more time. To and go. Let the church say amen. Let the church let the church say amen. God has spoken. Let the church say amen. All right, one, two, three. Here we go and amen. Thank you so much. That was good. It, those jazz chords, I figured it'd be better if you tried them instead of me. <laughs> so, this is a good two minutes. Yeah. Oh, I forgot we had questions. Yeah, that lady. I think, well, there is a performance on on um, September, I want to say it's the 18th. Is that a, is that a Tuesday? Tuesday uh, at the Tiffany Center for the Arts. There's a lakeside room and there's a group called the Friends of this uh, of Tiffany Center. And I think the concert, you have to look on the website, but I think it's 10 to 11 or 11 to 12, but I think it's like 11, 10 to 11. Yeah.
Maybe, yeah, yeah. It's worth it. Yeah. Simply Center for the Arts, yeah, yeah. Um, unfortunately, I won't be able to bring 125 students because of the space, and so we're doing what we call a top 10. And there are 10 most beloved songs that we've done since I've been there. So it's like a trip down memory lane. And so if you come, please say hello so I can say, yes, I remember you and I can put you in a spot, right? Yeah. Um, but if you also go to, if you have Facebook or any of those social media sites, you can just look up ASU Gospel Choir and we list our concerts. And of course, at the School of Music, there's the events page. Uh, you can see all of our um, many wonderful concerts that are happening across this, um, the year, so yeah. We don't yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But hopefully we can get here in the spring. Yeah, yeah. if that's a possibility. Yeah, we would love to come. The, the students love to, you know, especially if you feed them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes, sir. So, you know, I talk about this in my syllabus, though, because you, the question was how do you sort of, uh, oh, uh, the question is how do you think about issues of religion and, um, and, and being in a, uh, an institution that gets federal funds. Uh, and the first thing I say in, the, in, the, um, in my syllabus is that uh, I do think about the differences te for teaching about religion and teaching for religion. Uh, and those, those lines are very, very um, determined for me. And so I may in my class talk about religion because it's constitutional that we can talk about religion as a way to think about history or to think about context. And say we were singing a song about David's lament, and David was going through. So I may talk about, you know, let's say that in the gospel song, there's a, a part that goes, oh, oh, right? And I want to bring out the heaviness of that. So I may tell them the story about, you know, the context uh, surrounding David in that moment so that I can get them to sing the song better. But what I don't, so that's, that's talking about religion. But what I don't say is, like, raise your hand if you've ever had an old moment and you want to give your life to Christ. And so... Uh, don't do that because um, that would be te thinking about religion, or thinking for, or teaching for religion, and uh, usually that becomes doctrinal, uh, and I try to stay away from, you know, some of those doctrinal things, and so I'm just a, a, a person that I believe that people, and the Holy Spirit is still so wise, and that if people identify in that way, they still will get the message, yeah. So I do make that very clear in the syllabus, and uh, I think that's what's been, that, that sort of ideology has also been one of the ways that people feel welcome to the gospel choir. Yeah. And so people, and, I, I, and I, I admit that there are people in our gospel choir who are not Christian, or people who are different parts, uh, parts of different faiths, who may have never clapped and sung, and so a lot of that is, 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 is that the beauty of learning the music and the culture, and, uh, and I just leave everything else up to God, I guess, you know? Yeah. Good question, though, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. I guess this is where you start singing and leading, right? Be still, be still. God will fight your battle. Be still. God will fight your battle. Be still, be still. God will fight your battle. God will fight your battle if you just keep still. <laughs>